YouTube. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. It's me again, the Mrs. Lone Star Texas Ranger, as you guys are calling me. I think it's so cute. Anyways, um, I've got her back. She's home. And today, it's not going to be as tedious of, um, uh, or probably as long of a video as last time. I can try to cut. So it's not going to be as long of a video, and I'm not doing as deep of a cleaning as I did last time, but we do for sure want to tackle the floors today. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, we bought a wet vac, um, like some of you guys suggested, suggested, and I thank you guys so much for that. Um, so I'm going to go, go in there, vacuum it out, and then I'm going to be scrubbing the floors again. This time, really trying to get up a lot of that grease that is down there. And so, yeah, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take you along with me, and I may use my mic um, at some point. That way, um, if I'm trying to talk to you guys in the truck, you can hear me. But yeah, so that's what we're going to get started with. Shimon's going to get me some hot water with Dawn and some um, pine salt. I always forget. That it's. I keep wanting to say hydrogen peroxide, but that's not what I'm doing. I'm doing pine salt um, to kind of uh, get up some of that grease. Um, so yeah, let's do this. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it may be helpful if you roll an intro while I get all of this stuff together. So now is the time to roll the intro. There. All right, so this is what we're working with. We've got our wet vac. We pulled out all of Simone's stuff. And so I wanna, I wanna see if you guys can see it. So all of this like grit and grime and all of that, it like, it covers the whole floor down here. And uh, in order for us to start making preparations for the other things that we wanna do with the truck, we first need to get her clean. So um, Simone's already plugged in the wet vac. Uh, I got a lot of wires that I got to work around. Um, I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, is that the oh, CB radio? Okay, cool. All right, so yeah. So this is what we are tackling today, guys. Wish me luck. You guys got on me last time about not having gloves. So I'm making sure I got some this time. Um... Like I said, we have a, quite a bit of um, wires and there's screws and nails and just all of that everywhere. I'm hoping that does not completely ruin this wet bag. Um, I'm going to try my best. Shimon, at some point, is going to join me in here so that he can kind of um, secure this bed because he said it was moving a little bit. So. Oh, yeah, hand me that thing. What is that white? Um, okay, we'll just put, put it back. Here. <laughs> hmm. um, the CB's in a way? Yeah. Can I just let it hang? Either that or just suck it up there. All right, guys, I am about to get started using this Bauer wet vacuum. Um, this is the six gallon one, I believe. Um, this is my first time using a wet vacuum, so I will let you guys know how I like it um, and if I would recommend uh, this to some of you guys. But yeah, so let's give it a try and see how she does.
so I'm gonna take some Dawn and I'm gonna try to get this area. This is what it's looking like right now. I just wanna try to get up some of this grime. So let's see how that goes. This right here is basically how this area looked before I cleaned it and you can clearly clearly tell the difference it looks so much better it's this is a, you know a money-making machine so it's probably not gonna be spotless but this is at least going in the right direction I will say so far I am liking the wet vac it does a lot of the work and I don't feel so wasteful Last time I had, uh, I used like a ton of paper towels, so I'm glad that, you know, it'll just suck all of that water and soap up. But the star of the show, you guys, is this bad boy right here. I'm literally just spraying it on a surface, and maybe I can try to catch it, uh, do a clip and show you guys. But I'm literally just spraying it on the surface, letting it sit there for a second, scrubbing away, and it is doing most of the work for me, you guys. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. It's looking good. All right, you guys, I'm gonna see if I can show you really fast. But I'm just gonna give it a nice little spray. Okay. And let me put my gloves on really fast. All right, so I'm gonna take my brush. You can already see all that dirt coming up. I've been scrubbing away at this thing, the handle is falling off. Use the wet back. just after one pass you guys look at that that looks so good
this is just how she looks after a couple more passes. Um, Shimon said he needed to get uh, some stuff done um, to the bed. So I'm going to kind of stop here. I know I got a, a good amount of like debris off of the ground. Um, but if he's going to be doing some more work, I don't want to do a, a final at least a vacuum until he's finished. So um, I'm going to hand it off to him and see how well, um, else he wants to get done today. We don't have a ton of time to do septic. He is going to head right back out. Um, so we're just trying to get as much as we can in the little time frame. So today it, the degreasing was the big, the, um, big task for today. So I'm going to hand it off to Shimon and see what he wants to do. Cold. It is cold, and uh, Shimon is about to has to head back out. This week was was short with him, but it's okay. Um, but I wanted to come over here really fast and show you guys um, what we're ending with for this week's little truck update, and I'll hand it back over to Shimon. So this is how she's looking now. So, um, I mean, it's, it's metal and it's used, so it's not perfect, but, um, it looks so much cleaner, um, now that we scrubbed at those floors, it's getting a little dark, but I just wanted to show you guys, we came in here and we vacuumed this section out, we, um, scrubbed all of this, where if you go back either earlier in this video or at, um, our videos when we first brought her home, she was just um, filled <laughs> with all kinds of gunk and stuff. You can see on like the little wire cover thingies, I guess that's what that is. <laughs> it's still really dirty, but I didn't want to touch those. So, so yeah, but that is it for my job this week, you guys. Uh, we have to keep it simple because of the time. Um, um availability shimon had with us so um oh i didn't even show you guys so he did also get his fridge in here so we're really excited about that um because now he can um stock up his food how he likes and so so yeah but that's it for for me for this week guys i'm hoping in the near future um we can take you guys along with us when we start to look at the specific parts and stuff um i will kind of give you guys a little idea of what i'm thinking um i'm really wanting like all of like the shelves and stuff that go on like both sides of like the bed i want to do it customized because i'm pretty sure that um it was like cut off from the truck itself like the shelving that was originally here and i don't know if that's an easy fix to replace um so i may do something um using a different type of material than the plastic things that came up on there so just an idea um again if you guys have any ideas um please feel free to comment it down below i do read all the comments and i value everyone's opinions and suggestions so but that is it for me you guys uh Shimon is going to take you along with him for the rest of the night because he's about to get back on the road and start driving again. So enjoy the rest of the video. That is it for me. I love you guys so much. You're so, your support means the absolute world to us and I'm forever thankful. So um, I'll see you on the next one. So progress has been made. So if y'all look back in some of my older videos, you'd notice that that last light right there works when it wants to. So I finally got that thing on. The wire, is something going on with the connector. So I may have to solder a new connector on there. Speaking of soldering, I fixed, y'all been getting on me about this marker light right here in this blinker. So I got that fixed. So the harness was broken. And so I had to re-solder uh, the harness. 
and she works just fine. This one as well, this one has been working, but looks a lot better when all the lights work on it. Uh, what else have I done? I've been busy, my wife's been busy inside the truck. I went ahead and I uh, put that hood latch on there. Y'all have been getting on me about that too. Uh, the, new, the new license plate came in. Uh, the new license plate's on there. So this is the shop vac that we bought. This Bauer from Harbor Freight. It did okay. It could have done better. But for the money and for what we used it for, we didn't need anything big or fancy. But I do wish it did a little bit better. So now I have to uh, put my stuff back in here. So I am going to get like a plastic drawer thingy for right now to put right here. But the floors are ready for new flooring. So we're going to get some insulation padding for the floor. And we're also eventually going to get some insulation padding for behind this. And then we're eventually going to pull that off. So y'all let me know down there in the comment section what brand we should get. And then this is kind of just rigged on here. This little light right here. Boom. So yeah, guys, lots of progress. It feels so clean in here, guys. Oh, and then duh. I walked right past it. Hold on, where's my light at? There we go. I got the fridge in here. I need to dust off the top of it, top of it, but it's been sitting in my garage. A buddy of mine gave it to me a couple of years ago. But we have a nice size little fridge here. I need to see if I can find the shelves for it. That go right there. But yeah, we got ourselves a fridge. So cool. Yeah, so clean, guys. Like, look. Nothing. Nothing. This is just on there, but it's not coming up. See? So, yeah, she's ready for some padding and some new floors. And then, like I said, some new uh, foam panels for back there. Some of y'all were saying spray foam. And some of y'all were giving me a brand. I don't recall the brand that y'all were telling me, but uh, y'all were telling me a different brand I could get. So, that's where we're at right now. So yeah, she's off. I need to get those gloves out of here, but yeah. So eventually, I'm going to get like a three, three drawer plastic thingamajig, and uh, I'll go from there. So next, I need to fix, which I'm not really too good on wiring, is uh, this light right here. Actually, does that one even work at all? I might just take the whole thing off because I mean, I'm legal with just these two. So I might just take that off. That way they don't see that DOT doesn't see that it's off. But yeah, guys, I did something else to the truck too. I forgot what it was, but yeah. We're moving in the right direction. So let me go ahead and find a place for all this stuff. I literally pulled everything out so she can clean the inside of it. So anyway, shout out to Laura. Thank you for helping me clean, or not for helping me clean, for cleaning the inside of the truck and scrubbing and getting into the nitty gritty. And, uh, and here's the old mattress. I just don't have anywhere to put the, the mattress. And then uh, that metal piece, we still got that. I gotta get rid of that. And then that's the old floor. So we're gonna keep the old floor because when we get the new floor, I'm just gonna get some PVC board, like a big piece, put it out on the ground, get the old floor, put it on top, cut it, like shape it out, and then just cut from how the old floor. That way, I ain't gotta go through there and remeasure and everything. Uh, so we're just gonna use the old floor, piece it back together, and then uh, cut out a new floor. So yeah, guys, so this looks like it's gonna be the end of the video right here, but it's not because we, are leaving out for uh, Atlanta tonight. So I'm going to go inside this house, hang out with them for a little bit, and then we're going to hit the road. Uh, we got to be in Atlanta tomorrow night, which is Saturday night. Uh, and then I'll be in the truck when we go live with uh, B-Lane Fitness. I'll be out there now in Atlanta doing it. I'd love to be at home doing it, but it did not work out that way. So. We're going to be in Atlanta doing that. So, Fidel, if you're watching, I'm coming to Atlanta. Frank Nitty, if you're watching, let's collab. Let's link up. Uh, so, uh, Atlanta, 
truckers and right in with DJ. I think you're out there in Georgia too. If you're out there in Georgia, let's collab, let's get together, put together a video for our uh, our subscribers. But uh, let's get everything situated guys so I don't leave out of here too late with this noisy truck and piss off some neighbors. So let's go say goodbye and we'll get out of here. All right, doors closed. They're probably over there in the window. Let's go get this trailer and get on out of here. We're all hooked up and ready to go. So we got the, uh, the lights working. Got potential guys what do y'all think comment down below you've got some potential everything's all hooked up and ready to go of course the abs light is on I need to get that checked out i've tried the uh, the connector so every trailer I get, I've had the ABS light on, which lets me know it's not the trailer, it's the truck. So I do need to get that checked out. I'm wondering if it has something to do with the truck being a, a 2000 to where the ABS systems were different back then. I don't know. Y'all comment down below. What do y'all think it could be? Get that door open. I don't think that it has the uh, the latch or lock or anything in it. I tried it with a key and everything, and I cannot get that door open. So, let's go in ahead and get some miles behind us. Probably try to put a good 200 miles in tonight. Oh. Maybe get up to, uh, I don't know, somewhere in Louisiana. Depends on how tired I get. It's only seven o'clock. I can still get a good five hours in before midnight hits. I'm just gonna drive until I get tired. But I mean, technically I'm already, I don't feel like driving, but uh, tomorrow's Saturday. I at least want to get past Baton Rouge. Well, no, I'll be leaving out in the morning, so. I don't know. There's a truck stop in Baton Rouge that I like stopping at, but they just started uh, charging for parking, like $10 to park. Which actually, y'all saw me park there the other day when I went to Canes. It's kind of like right under the uh, the Baton Rouge Bridge. I used to, that, that used to be my little secret spot where I could park there and I always be parking. But now they're charging 10 bucks a night, so. But yeah, let's get on down the road. I will uh, go through my comments and choose the topic and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So, uh, give us something to talk about today. So, it'll be night driving, so it'll be some night time lapse. But uh, we'll make do either way. So, we're right here off of uh, Alternate 90. So, instead of going all the way back to I-10 and jumping on I-10 East, we'll go the back way and take the alternate way around until we get to Beaumont. And then when we get to Beaumont, uh, it'll take us right there to I-10. And then uh, straight on eastbound. So, uh, let's roll.
So I was gonna get some fuel here, but I'll explain why I didn't in a second, but got some Subway, eat fresh. truck is so much cleaner guys so let me put you guys on game real quick so i was going to get fuel from here with the uh land star discount so fuel is 364 a gallon here with my land star discount i would have got it for 278 a gallon i believe 278 a gallon which is almost a whole dollar off it's like 94 or 96 cents off excellent excellent discount i still have about a half a tank of fuel but i'm gonna wait until i get to lafayette louisiana i have plenty of fuel to get there the reason i'm going to get fuel there with the land star discount fuel is 282 a gallon there it is four cents more a gallon but uh, with Landstar, as certain pilots flying J's, we get a bonus when it comes to our uh, fuel rewards. So for those of you who don't know what that is, let me turn off the truck so y'all can hear me on this, how to save some money. So with getting fuel, a lot of these big major truck stops have fuel cards to where we get points and discounts for stuff inside. Like for instance, Pilot Flying J, which is why I prefer them. Um, every 75 gallons, you go up to a new tier. So for every gallon equals basically one penny. And then when you get 75 gallons, every gallon becomes 1.5 cents. Then you get 75 more gallons, uh, every gallon equals two cents. And so you're able to, to stack that money up. So let's say for instance, I got 150 gallons at the, uh, the one cent, the, the bottom tier. That's a dollar fifty. Pilot Flying J, it goes all the way up to four X, the four, uh, one gallon, four pennies. So if you get 150 gallons, that's what? Six bucks at the top tier. Every now and then they have a promotion for like five X. Uh, but me, I get fuel here, for Pilot Flying J all the time. So you, it's 75 gallons per day. So usually by the, what's that, the eighth day of the month, I'm already at the top tier, and I just rack up those points. So whenever I buy things at truck stops like Subway, like even what I bought here, I got me some Subway, and I got me some chips to go with the Subway, and I also bought a power rate. I use my points to get those things. I didn't even have to come out of pocket. I use my points to get them. So when you get fuel, you rack up points, and you get, and they turn into dollars that you can use at the truck stop. Uh, you can use it for uh, to pay for paid parking, and then also you get shower rewards. So um, that's why I prefer Pilot Flying J because they have the best point systems. Uh, Petro TA is next, and then Loves has the worst point system, which is why I don't usually choose Loves. Now, the reason I'm going to go to get pay four cents more per gallon to get fuel is because for some reason the Pilot Flying J's in Texas do not give us what's called a fleet bonus with Landstar. Probably because the, get, the fuel is already stupid cheap in Texas because Texas is an oil and gas thing. We produce gas, you know, fuel and stuff here in oil. And so uh, fuel is already cheap here as y'all can see. Uh, but in Louisiana at that Lafayette Pilot Flying J or even at the one in Iowa, Iowa City, one in uh, Lake Charles area, they have what's called a fleet bonus with Landstar. And so the fleet bonus, uh, it's a lot more. I don't know how much it is. I haven't really sat down and figured it out yet, but it's a lot more. Like that, if I fuel up, I might get five or 10 bucks in points. So I did the math. Even if I got a hundred gallons with that four cent difference, that's only about a $4 savings if for me going to pay four cents more a gallon. But I will be able to recuperate 10 to $15 in points even though it it uh, 
narrows down where I can use that money. I stop at Pilot Flying J all the time anyway, so uh, I get to spend all those points. Like I've got a lot of, like there's been times I've had 50 to $100 just sitting in points that I can use at the Pilot Flying J's. So when I'm out on the road eating, uh, when I go to a Subway, I think maybe, I don't eat Taco Bell, but I think Taco Bell does it when you see the pizzas inside of there. Uh, Arby's, which is why I eat a lot of Arby's, because I get to use my points. Wendy's, you used to be able to use your points, not anymore, I guess they've become, become independent. But uh, a lot of these restaurants, you can use your points. Even at Petro and TA, you can use your point system there for the, uh, <clears throat> what is it, the Bear, uh, I can't think of the name of that the restaurant. <laughs> But uh, Country Pride, Iron Skillet, and then Black Bear Diner, I think it's called. You can use your points to, to, to dine in at those restaurants. So I'm going to pay more. I'm going to pay $4 more, $0.04 cents more a gallon. Because with Landstar and, some, and sometimes with these big mega carriers, you get what's called a fleet bonus to where you get more, uh, more money. So I'm going to pay the $4 more in fuel, but I'm going to get $10 to $15 in points. So... I always look at it and kind of narrow it down with that. If it's, a, if it's a few cents difference and I kind of do the math, if I, if I get more money in points, I'm going to pay a little bit more in fuel to get that deduction, uh, to get that the extra points because I spend my money here anyway. So if it was a truck stop I didn't spend my money at, then no, I wouldn't do it. But uh, we'll see. So later on in the video, guys, we're going to do a bit of a breakdown on my uh, revenue for the week, my expected revenue. And then in a later video to come, we'll do a comparison. A lot of y'all in the comments said that you all want me to do a comparison. Uh, a 2023 video of my revenue that I made with Landstar last year. And then kind of a comparison versus if I would have kept my international Lone Star versus now. So anyway, let's get on down the road to Lafayette, Louisiana. I got Subway because my trainer with B-Lean Fitness, y'all can check them down there in the description below. My, per my virtual personal trainer got on my behind today because I log everything that I eat and I have to, he wants me to hit so many calories a day and do so many exercises. So when we get to Lafayette, I'm gonna try to do some pull-ups or something, but he got on my behind today. I got a nice little lengthy thing from him. And uh, so he told me to, uh, he's like, is there a subway at the truck stops? And when he said that, I already knew what he was getting at. So here's my proof. I got me a subway turkey because i don't i don't eat pork i stay away from sodas and i um i stay away from bottom feeders like lobster uh shrimp uh crawfish flounder i stay away from all the bottom feeders uh just my own personal preference just for health reasons not anything uh, religious or anything but just my personal preference preference so but yeah so turkey chicken or beef Maybe eventually I'll be pulling away from beef, but uh, trying to stay with turkey, chicken, which he told me it was a good protein anyway, which that's obvious. So I'm going to try to stick with that. So let's get back on this uh, on this road here. And uh, eventually I dig into my sandwich. But y'all stick around. We'll get into some revenue here uh, shortly.
right, y'all. So, uh, change of plans. We're gonna park right here and just get fuel first thing in the morning when we leave out. Uh, I was going to get fuel and get down the road a little bit. But when I pulled in, I saw this little spot over here in the corner. I said, oh, snap. Let me see if I can get it. So I hauled butt around the parking lot, came in there, and as y'all saw, I got straight in there. I was trying to beat the, it was like two trucks behind me. They pulled in behind me. I was like, nope, this is my spot, y'all. I saw it first. But uh, so yeah, I was gonna get fuel tonight and get a little bit further down the road. But it is 11.30 at night and we are eight hours and 10 minutes away. So we're, we're still, I can make that in one in one sitting. Um, let's see. But yeah, so we have about 590 miles to go. So, but yeah guys, so I told you guys that we were going to uh, talk about some revenue. Let's see here. So here's what we got. So we have, uh, so the week started when we uh, picked up in uh, Port Allen last week after we sat at Cisco for eight hours on the dock. So our payroll started with that load there. So that load paid uh, basically 1625, about 282 a mile, uh, about 600 miles or so. And that load was about 45,000 pounds. And like I said, that one paid 1625. So we picked that load up on the 8th and delivered it on the 9th. And then uh, we picked up in Laredo, Texas uh that load paid 1300 right at three bucks a mile about a 440 mile 450 mile trip that load was 44,000 pounds it was a hazmat load uh that went to Ar from laredo to arlington texas which is basically dallas texas dropped that off on the 10th and then we went over to uh, forney texas which is east dallas uh only 30 miles up a dead head or so and uh, we did a drop and hook at that uh, the, uh, Goodyear uh, warehouse. And uh, we brought a load back down to Laredo. And uh, that one paid twelve forty five, dollars um, about two eighty dollars a mile, about 450 mile trip. That load was light. It was about 29,000 pounds or so. Then, while we were down there in Laredo, the load that we have on us now pays twenty six forty five. Uh, it pays two thirty seven a mile. Doesn't pay the best rate per mile wise. But the reason I booked this load because it would have either been a thousand dollar load going home, and then it probably would have been the last load for the week. Uh, or I can do this load still and deliver on a Saturday because it's a 24 hour facility. We've been there before. You guys have seen me there before at this uh, Home Depot uh, warehouse. But because I was able to deliver on a weekend, deliver there, do a 34 hour break, and then have a load coming out first thing Monday morning, that's why I booked this load. So it pays 26.45, so it adds an extra 2,600 bucks to the end of my revenue week, rather than a thousand, 1,500, even the $2,000, it's still, made sense revenue wise because i got to increase my max out, max out my revenue uh says this load is uh actually paperwork is right here this is the one they didn't put all the product on the truck uh is this why i'm doing so good on fuel mileage hold up guys i'm not burning any fuel like at all okay so this is accurate okay uh, well, I don't know. I don't know what, what they got going on here. This load is on, it's not more than 10,000 pounds. So I'm not burning zero fuel. Uh, so yeah, Laredo to Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Picked up on Thursday the 11th, delivering on Saturday the 13th, all day and I can deliver it's a 24 hour facility. And 237 a mile, 2645, and it's about 
1,150 miles, super, super, super light load. Uh, drop it hook in Atlanta, and then I booked a load coming out of uh, Atl Roberta, Georgia, which is going towards Macon, which is down south of Atlanta, going straight back home. It's a hazmat load. It's heavy at about 43,000 pounds, but uh, it'll get us straight back home to Houston. And then I booked a load coming out of uh, Galveston, which is where the beach is, about an hour south of Houston. Uh, coming out of Galveston, going back down to Laredo, and that load paid like four or four fifty a mile. It was an excellent paying load. I had another load that paid four fifty a mile going up to Memphis, but the guy didn't want to give it to me. I booked it, but then he took me off of it because the customer wanted somebody who was going to be available to pick it up that morning. I was like, dude, I can get the load. It's no problem. Yeah, but the customer. I was like, okay. And then I booked another load after that, paying like $4 a mile going right back home. But uh, I had to cancel that one because I booked the load with the first dude. Then I called the second load. And then that first dude called me back. He's like, nah, nah, I can't, I can't give you the load. He's like, whatever, dude. But uh, but yeah, I paid like 1800 bucks going up to Memphis. That's an eight-hour drive. Easy load. But he said no. So it is what it is. We found another one, another load that paid like four fifty a mile. So we we're in good hands. The loads are out there. Just gotta find them. And as I always ask the agent, like, do you have this run often? You know, do you have more of these? And they'll say yes or no, or yeah, if you have, a, if I have another one, since you're always in that area, I'll give you another one. So, so that is what we're looking at come revenue this week. And I think I spent about right at or right under two grand in fuel. So that brings the gross total to $6,815 before Landstar, before fuel, before everything, uh, 6815. And then let's say I do spend about two grand in fuel. That's about, uh, it brings it down to 4815. So it brings my rate per mile. I believe it's like a dollar 83 a mile, uh, after fuel is deducted. So a big misconception with Landstar is that they take 35% uh, of the full amount. That is not the case. The math is actually a little bit more complicated than that. So the way it works, let's say a load pays $2,000. Um, load pays $2,000. Actually, here, here, here. I'll give y'all a better example. So, this load that we have on us right now, um, let's see, where is it at? So this load that we have on us right now pays, uh, which load is it? Okay. So the load that we have on us right now pays 26.45. So the Line haul is $2,220. The fuel surcharge is $425. The fuel surcharge, the $425, that is mine. That goes straight into my bank account. Landstar gets 35% of the line haul amount, the $2,220, $2,220. So that is how it's broken up. So the fuel surcharge is mine completely. The line haul is where they get the 35% from. So when it comes to booking these loads, I always ask them to uh, put more on the uh, the fuel surcharge. So let's say the, the, it's a $2,000 load and $200 of that is a fuel surcharge and 1,800. So the load is broken up into two parts. The gross is 2,000, line haul is 1,800, fuel is 200, which adds up to 2,000. So I say, well, can you reduce the line haul down to seventeen hundred and put an extra hundred on top of the uh, the fuel surcharge? So you gotta gotta negotiate, and that's how you make your money with Landstar. So a lot of you guys have been saying saying that you want to come over to Landstar, and that is my tip to you: increase the fuel surcharge, or what's called accessorials, which is like loading and unloading, because Landstar they give us all of our accessorials, or like any kind of hazmat pay or anything like that. See if they can increase your accessorials or your um, your uh, line haul. I'm sorry, your fuel surcharge, because that is all your money. Fuel surcharge, accessorials, 
those are yours 100 percent landstar takes 35 percent of what's called the line haul so that's how that works so we ran for about a dollar 83 a mile this week not horrible after fuel um if i had a truck note that'd be horrible if i had that old truck when i was paying we'll get into that guys so comment down below like y'all already said that y'all uh want me to do like a comparison video of the two and then like a, a review of 2023 so y'all be sure to stick around for that so guys it is chilly out here i'm gonna see if i can uh figure out how to work this um this diesel heater back here and i'm gonna crank that thing up and get some good old sleep so thank y'all for tuning in make sure y'all tune in tomorrow uh sunday at 6 30 at 6 or 6 30 p.m central standard time so we can talk to brandon the owner of b lean fitness because uh we got some stuff to talk about our health so i'm gonna get out of here it, it is freaking cold out here i'm gonna get out here and walk around the parking lot get some exercise in maybe uh do a few push-ups or something uh finished up my subway sandwich it was excellent but uh, i need to start eating that some more and, and start doing better my trainer will get on my behind so but yeah guys they are like i said a virtual training company and they're they got a new program for truck drivers looking out for us uh, which reminds me my dot physical is coming up so i need to uh i need to arrange to do that so anyway anyway guys this is Lone Star Texas Ranger. Make sure you subscribe. We are almost at 6,500 subscribers. I have a really big giveaway coming up, guys. Really, really, really big. Um, a really big giveaway. The biggest giveaway. This is it's gonna be. It's, it's, this is gonna be huge. So make sure y'all sub, uh, subscribe because only a subscriber can win this giveaway. And for registration purposes you have to live in the united states you might be able to live in canada i don't know but for like registration and all that kind of stuff hint hint uh you might have to live in the u.s for that and you have to have a uh, a cdl so make sure you have a cdl in order to uh to win this but anyway guys make sure you hit the subscribe button because i want to see you win this uh this raffle and we'll give you details as they come but guys this is Lone Star Texas Ranger signing off. We'll catch you guys at noon Central Standard Time on uh, probably Monday. I'll probably see y'all Monday, but hit the subscribe button in the meantime. Okay, you guys, I'm going to have to try to be quick because Emmanuel is waking up and I was trying my best to get this done before that. So he may have to join us in the video but hi you guys um happy new year happy 2024 i hope you guys are having a great start to your year here he is <laughs> okay let's try that again um okay so hi my name is laura i'm a stay-at-home mom to four kiddos um and a truck driver to a wife and uh this channel is just full of um homemaking homeschooling cooking baking gardening just life i guess um but this video in particular um although i'm sharing it with you guys this one is more for the vault i just want to have record of what my personal goals are for 2024 and so part of which i'm sharing with you guys but the other bigger part is just i just want to have <laughs> I just want to have it on record and I want to see how close I get to attaining um, most, if not all of these goals. So yeah, let's get started.